How's everybody doing? Yeah, good. Have a good lunch. Feeling good? All right, we've got a, a lot. Um, I just kept adding more slides. So we have a lot to talk about today, uh, and, and we'll just come, jump right in. Uh, like Ryan said, uh, my name is Ruth Burridi. I've been doing search engine optimization since 2006, so about nine years, which is approximately a million years in internet time. Uh, I just moved to Oklahoma uh, last year, and uh, before that I lived in Seattle and was the head of SEO at uh, Moz, formerly SEO Moz, one of the uh, leading tool providers for search engine optimization in the world and home to the web's most vibrant SEO community. And uh, now I'm here in Oklahoma. My uh, husband got a job at OU and I'm just thrilled to be here. Uh, a little bit about... Uh -huh. A little bit about Big Wing Interactive. Uh, about four years ago, uh, OPUBCO, which is the company that owns the Oklahoman, OPUBCO and the Oklahoman, really saw that there was a big uh, need in the Oklahoma City area and in this state for digital marketing services. And a lot of the businesses uh, that, that we do business with as a company, uh, it, as the newspaper, people who buy ads in the newspaper and on News OK, that kind of small and medium-sized business, had a real need for digital marketing that wasn't being met in the market. So we thought, why not start offering that ourselves? So I uh, hired a couple of really smart people, started with just two people, that was four years ago. Now we have a 35-person team. We do web design, web development, social media marketing, search engine optimization, paid search advertising, content marketing, uh, you name it, email marketing, you name it, we do it. Uh, and uh, that team has grown to the point where uh, we've decided that it's time to, uh, just from a brand perspective, not from a relationship perspective, uh, get away from the quite being, being quite so Oklahoma focused. Uh, we have clients in 13 states and Mexico now. So uh, we just last month rebranded to the Big Wing Interactive, our full service digital marketing agency. We're still owned by Opubco. We still work in the same beautiful new downtown building, uh, but that's the story with that. So if you haven't heard of us, it's because we're brand new. Uh, and if you want to learn more about that, you can go to bigwing.com. So over the years, we've uh, amassed a lot of different clients and we've been able to get great results for them. People like Integris, um, local Qdoba, Tulsa Hyundai, um, the Oklahoma Marathon, just a few of the, the many businesses that we've been able to, to get great results for over the years. But enough about us, let's talk about more. People, uh, there, are over, there are almost 12 billion Google searches per month. Uh, and 93% of online experiences begin with a search engine. So that means 93% of the time that somebody opens up their browser window, Internet Explorer, Microsoft, or uh, Mozilla Firefox, or whatever browser you're using, 93% of those experiences are starting with a search engine. In fact, over half of all traffic to all websites on the Internet starts with a search on a search engine. So it's not just that purchasing decision. Every time somebody uses a search engine, which is 93% of the time that they're using the internet at all, you have an opportunity to connect with them. So when people ask me, do I really need to be thinking about my website? Do I really need to be thinking about digital marketing? I ask them, do you have a website that you want people to come to? <laughs> And then do something like buy something or read something or share something or go somewhere like your actual physical location. Guess what? It's not field of dreams. You can't just build a website and expect people to come to it. You need to do digital marketing. It's so much more than having a website. You need to be able to promote your website so people know where it is, can get there, and then give you money in exchange for goods and services, which is what most businesses are trying to do. So let's talk about how people use the internet when they search and how people might use search to make decisions. This is a real life example from my real life. I got married last year and uh, I went on my honeymoon and uh, was trying to figure out even where to go on my honeymoon. So I started out just by Googling best honeymoon locations and that was so much information. I, it was so broad. It had so many different opinions. It, I didn't even know where to start. I couldn't make a decision from this one search. So I turned to social media and I asked my Facebook friends, where should we go on our honeymoon? Uh, and got suggestions from them on places they went on their honeymoons that they liked. I also went on Pinterest and I started pinning pictures of places that it seemed like were romantic and beautiful that I might like to go to. Okay, now just based on what I, what I like about what I've seen, I decide, all right, let's go to Hawaii on our honeymoon. 
So at that point, I do another search and I'm just Googling Hawaii vacations. Now somebody who is interacting with me as a customer at that point in my journey doesn't even know that I want to go on my honeymoon. All they know is that I want to go on a vacation to Hawaii. But guess what? Hawaii is a big place. There are a bunch of islands, there are a bunch of different things to do. All we knew for sure was that we didn't want to go in a helicopter. But that doesn't really narrow it down that much. <laughs> so I turned to a trusted third-party content provider, in this case, the knot.com, which is the website and the tool that I was using to plan the wedding. Uh, I already had a relationship with this website. I already trusted them. I went on and read some of the things that they had to say about things to do on your honeymoon in Hawaii. Based on that, we decide, all right, we want to go to Maui, and I search Maui honeymoon packages, and that's the search that gets my money. However, every single point on this journey is an opportunity for a business or a brand to build a relationship with me as a consumer. So by the time I actually am ready to purchase and I know what I want, I'm more likely to buy from a brand that I already know and a brand I already trust. A great example is if you are going to go to a website about ice cream, are you going to go to icecream.com or are you going to go to benandjerry's.com? One has a lot stronger brand identity with you. It's a place that you recognize. It's a place that you trust. That didn't just happen. That's something that they've done by building a brand. And you can use the internet to build a brand, build relationships with your customers, so by the time they're ready to buy, they buy from you. So let's talk about how you can own the search engine results page, or SERP, as we say in the industry. This is an example of a search that I like to show off because it shows up one of our clients, uh, Home Builders OKC. It's a fairly competitive search. There are about 159,000 results in Google for it. And as you can see, Home Creations, which is, a, again, a client of ours, uh, shows up three times on this one page. They show up at the top in the ads, they show up in the local results, and then they show up again at the bottom of, uh, of the page in the organic search results. Uh, and, and it's a fairly competitive uh, market, and it's got consistent average monthly searches for this particular keyword, Home Builders OKC, um, of over 300 searches per month um, that you could be that now uh, when people, those 300 people search per month, they're seeing this business not once, not twice, but three times. That really, that multiple spots on the first page of search results does a lot to reinforce for searchers that your brand is legit. Clearly you belong there if you're showing up on the page several times. So first let's talk about pay-per-click marketing. Pay-per-click marketing, or Google search ads, Google AdWords, uh, is what drives the results at the top and the side of your search results page. You've probably seen them. They are ads. Ads are how Google makes money. Here's how Google makes money. Google makes money by selling ads. Google can charge more for their ads than other search engines can because more people use Google than use any other search engine. Google has therefore a vested interest in continuing to make sure that more people use Google than any other search engine, which means that they spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money trying to make sure that when you do a search on Google, you find what you're looking for. Um, so everything that you do when you're talking about search engine marketing, you should keep that in the back of your mind, that all Google cares about is helping people find what they're looking for. Uh, so what you're trying to do is show Google that when people search on a given keyword, you have what those people are looking for. And even with paid ads, you still need to demonstrate that you have what people are looking for. Because no matter how much money you pay Google, it's not going to be worth as much to them as that consistent user experience of people actually finding what they need. So when it comes to pay-per-click marketing, you do pay, but whether or not your ad shows up and in what position also depends on quality. So pay-per-click marketing uh, has uh, three major components, more or less. This is a gross oversimplification, but for our intents and purposes today, here's, what, here's the deal. Uh, you bid, it's basically an auction. You pick out the keywords that you want your ad to display for, and then you say, here's how much I'd be willing to pay per click. And Google will help you say, okay, uh, on average, people expect to pay around a dollar per click for this keyword, or $12 a click for this keyword, or if you're a mesothelioma lawyer, I'm sorry, because that's gonna be $100 a click. Um, but you sell them, okay, here's the maximum that I will pay for this click. And Google says, great. Then they take a look at your ad campaign and your website to say, what is this actually about? 
is this website a very high quality example of this search? Because if it is, they want to encourage that and that's the website that they want to show for a search. So you can actually pay less per click by having a higher quality website. If I'm bidding on the phrase uh, auto dealers OKC and I'm an auto dealer in OKC and I've done a lot to show them that I'm an auto dealer and I'm in OKC, that's going to be great. They're going to want that. If I'm bidding on auto dealers OKC and I actually am in Indonesia and sell cages for giraffes, that's not a good experience. Somebody who is searching auto dealers OKC does not need a cage for their giraffe. So you're going to have to pay a lot, lot, lot more in order to be able to compete if you don't have a good quality score. Based on your maximum bid and your quality score, which is assigned by Google, they will give you what's called an ad rank. And your ad rank is basically where on the page you're going to show up, if you're going to be at the very top or down over on the side. Now, just because you have a maximum bid doesn't actually mean that you're going to have to pay your maximum bid every time. Based on your ad rank, so they'll give you an ad rank based on your maximum bid and your quality score, then what you pay is only one penny more than the person who has the ad rank below you pays per click. So if your maximum bid is $10, but the person below you, their maximum bid is $2, you only pay $2.01 per click. You don't have to pay all $10. Uh, and, and that's basically how it works. And then you only pay when somebody clicks through on your ad and goes to your website. So why do we want to do this? Why do we want to advertise on Google? Um, this is a question I get a lot, uh, in part because clicks through on pay-per-click ads are in general lower than clicks through on the organic search results, which we'll talk more about later. Uh, but there are some really great benefits to doing pay-per-click advertising. One is you can turn it on tomorrow. If you have $5,000 and you need an ad campaign up tomorrow, you can put that in, you can turn it on, you get started right away. Whereas a lot of the more natural and organic methods that we talk about take longer to really build that brand presence. Another great benefit of it is you can potentially be at the very, very top of the page. It's something you have a lot more control over than you do with search engine optimization. The other side of that, however, is that because you're paying per click with, with PPC marketing, when you turn it off, it's gone. If you're not paying, your ad's not going to show up. Whereas uh, with some of the other web marketing techniques that we use, you can get a longer term return on investment by investing in your website. Um, the main thing that I want to really stress with pay-per-click marketing is that investing in the quality of your website is the best way to get the most bang for your buck. If you have a high quality website that really sends a message that yes, this is a great example of a website that should be appearing for this term, you're going to be able to, to really be the most cost effective. Uh, and and pay-per-click marketing is something that I, I often recommend to people if they need to get it up and running today. Um, and something that I usually recommend that people do in conjunction with other marketing efforts. Let's talk about local search now. Local search is uh, how you appear in the map results. Uh, often there will be a pack of usually either three or seven uh, businesses appearing in local results, and there's often a map as well. So this is again the result for Home Builders OKC. Increasingly, Google is trying to figure out whether or not you want, as a searcher, local results, even if you don't say you do. So even if I, if I Google the word pizza, I probably don't want the Wikipedia page for pizza. I don't want to learn the history of pizza. I want some pizza. So they're going to show me pizza restaurants in my area, even though I didn't specify pizza OKC. Uh, so local search is becoming increasingly important. Google is spending more and more time trying to figure out when queries should and should not be localized. And they're trying to mix in local results whenever it makes sense. So it's important to send strong local signals with your website. The three things that are the most important to be consistent with, with local SEO are your name, address, and phone number. You take a nap. Uh, you want your name, address, and phone number to be the same as many places on the web as it makes sense for it to be. Because that's the best way to send a signal to Google, this is a legit business, it's in a real place, it has a real phone number, this is not some scam where I've just made up, you know, we're not scam for you at 123 Fake Street, Norman, Oklahoma. This is a real place with real people selling real things. So you want to make sure that 
everywhere on the web, you seed your local information with your name, address, and phone number on your website, yes. But also, there are a lot of other places on the web. This is basically what the local search ecosystem looks like. There are a lot of different places uh, where different um, providers of local information, including Lo Lo Google, Google Local, that's hard to say, uh, get their information. Um, there are a couple of major data aggregators such as Locallys and InfoGroup, and, and those are the places that places like yellowpages.com get their information. You can also put your address, name and address and phone number information directly into various local directories like Yelp or Urban Spoon or TripAdvisor or whatever makes sense for your business. There's also Google Plus Local, which is now called Google My Business. There's Bing Local. There are a bunch of different places on the internet to put this information. And the most important thing to remember is that it needs to be consistent. If you have a different phone number everywhere, that can be great for tracking purposes, but when it comes to sending a strong local signal that this is a real business, consistency is everything. So really make sure, even down to like, are you using ST or are you spelling out the word street? Are you using number versus suite versus apartment versus unit? Really, really try to be as consistent as possible in the formatting of this information because that sends the strongest signal that you're legit. In the past year, Google has released an update called the Pigeon Update. They called it that. I think it's a really good name because it kind of pooed all over a lot of people's local search marketing efforts. Uh, what the Google Pigeon Update was intended to do was really, really amp up those local signals. What it has meant is that that NAP information being consistent across the web, while it is still a great first step, is not only part of the equation, you also need to make sure that on your website, you're sending strong local signals, that this is where my business is, this is my market, this is where that I should be coming up when people search for me. The other thing that the Google Pigeon update did was narrow the radius when somebody does not specify a city. So before, when I search pizza, if I'm here in OKC, I might, have got, I might get results from all the way up in Edmond, down in Norman, all over OKC. Chances are, I don't actually want, if I'm here right now at the winery and ordering a pizza, I'm not gonna call the hideaway pizza in Norman because it's really far away. I want a pizza that's closer to me. It's the same with so many other businesses, so many other local businesses. About 50% of mobile searches have some kind of local intent. Google is recognizing that, and so now the radius around a person where they might see results has shrunk to, it can be as small as 10 miles, it can be bigger in less populated areas. But that has meant that sending strong local signals because the opportunity to appear is lower becomes even more important. So that's local search in a nutshell. The other major place that you can show up on a search engine results page is in the organic SEO results. And we call them organic results because they're not paid. You have to naturally show Google that you are a high quality website that deserves to rank for this keyword. Uh, organic SEO is basically where the bulk of your traffic is gonna come from. One in three searchers are just gonna click the number one result. Another 18% click the number two result, uh, by the time you get down to the fourth result on the page, your percentage of click-through is in the single digits. Um, there's an SEO joke, where's the best place to hide a body? Page two of Google, <laughs> or page one of Bing. <laughs> That's mean. So <laughs> when we think about SEO, again, let's remember that what we are trying to show Google is my website, here's what this page is about, and, this page is one of the top 10 best pages on the internet for this particular query topic. Uh, and I like to, my metaphor that I use for SEO is it's basically like building a house um, or buying a house. If you're gonna buy a house and then throw a party, first you go through with the building inspector, you look at the foundation, you look at the electrical, you make sure there's no mold. That's your technical SEO. I'm gonna go into these in a little bit more detail. Then you bring in your furniture, you call your decorator, you put in your carpet and your drapes, you clean it up, it looks really nice, that's your on-page SEO. Next, you invite people to your party and you do that using content marketing. Content marketing is really where you promote your website and say, hey, party over here, come on in. Uh, and then the last piece of the pie is conversion. 
um, which I guess in my party metaphor would be like actually getting people to maybe bring you a present. In the real world, it's getting people to buy things from you because I can drive all the traffic to your website in the world, but do you really care if you don't make any money off of it? That's what I thought. Here, this is my favorite example of why technical SEO is important. This is one of my favorite restaurants in Seattle, the Metropolitan Grill. It is the fanciest steakhouse in Seattle. And look at their website, it's beautiful. They've got this great little paragraph about the Met and why it's nice. You can make reservations. They've got this little navigation in various areas of the site. However, when Google looks at this website, this is what Google sees. It's just a blank page. The first actual words that appear on this page are follow Met Grill on Twitter, which while I'm sure they'd appreciate Twitter followers is probably not actually the number one message that they wanna send with their website. The reason for this is that everything on this page is a picture, all of the words are actually pictures of words instead of words. Google is a robot, robots can't see pictures, robots can only read words. So it's important to make sure that your website is coded in actual HTML text and not just using images, they might look pretty. You might have a really great looking website, but if Google can't find, crawl, and understand your website, it's not gonna matter for SEO purposes. And that's really sad to me to see a company that's maybe invested hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars in their website, but hasn't taken the time to figure out, is this website search engine friendly? You can see your traffic really take a nosedive, even which, with an otherwise much improved site, which is why it's important to start out with a strong technical SEO foundation. Not only do you wanna make sure that your text is text instead of pictures, you wanna make sure that your pages don't have a lot of duplicates, so you don't have the same piece of content on multiple pages. You wanna make sure that all of the links inside your site work and to your site work so that Google doesn't get there, start crawling, hit a broken link and go, I'm not gonna send people this site, it's broken. Uh, so a strong technical SEO foundation is the first thing that we look at. From there, we talk about keywords, keyword use. So this is really where you tell, tell Google, here are the queries that I think that my page should be about. Why is keyword use important? Because it's important to talk to your users in the language that they use to search, not in the language that you use to talk about your business. SEO is all about your users. It's all about finding them where they are and bringing them to you. So no matter how many, pe how strongly you feel that you have mini cocoa cakes, and they're not chocolate cupcakes, they're mini cocoa cakes, the fact remains that 9,900 people per month search chocolate cupcakes and fewer than 10 search mini cocoa cakes. So by not talking to your users in the language that they use to search, you're missing a huge opportunity. And this is another way that SEO and doing some keyword research, there are a lot of great tools out there. Google has one called the Google Keyword Planner. Um, just go out, take a look at what people are using to search. Are they actually using the language to find you that you're using to talk about yourself? And if not, start thinking about how you can message to them in ways that they're already using to search. Because that's the amazing thing about search engine marketing is that you are selling people things that they already want. You are selling people things that they've already come to the internet to find. And that's great. So make sure that you're actually talking about to them in the language that they're using to search. Next, we're gonna invite people to our party. Uh, and it's here that I wanna talk about the difference between content creation and content marketing. Um, content creation is basically, if you just go on there, if you blog, you talk, it's great. That's a field of dreams mentality though. Once again, it takes more than building it for them to come. And uh, Mike and Steve have already talked a lot about different ways you can build relationships with people. As you're building relationships with people online, you can start sharing your content with them. You know, not in a salesy way, don't, you know, to Steve's point, just don't just only talk about yourself. But you can use content marketing to connect with people at every step of their journey. A great example is that Maui vacation thing that I read on the knot.com. That's a piece of content that they created. They don't even sell honeymoon packages, but they do sell other wedding related things. They knew that I, as a bride-to-be, would have a lot of interest in finding a honeymoon. So they created that piece of content for me because I'm their customer and I would find it useful. Which means when I am ready to buy things, like my wedding favors, which I also got from the not.com, I don't work for them, I just really had a great time planning my wedding. Um, I went back to them and bought it because I had a trusted relationship with them and that's the real power of content marketing. You not only create your content, but you put it out there, you let people know it's there, you grow your audience and then take a look at how your audience, how your users, how your customers 
are responding to your content and adjust your behavior accordingly. And over time, you will build relationships with people who come back again and again and again. And one way that Google looks at your content marketing, to bring it back to search engine marketing, is through links into your content. So um, basically, every link that you get from another website is a vote from that website saying, yes, this other website, that's, that's the business, that's cool. However, not all links are created equal. You can't just go out and buy, please do not buy links. Don't do it. If somebody offers to buy links for you, tell them no. Don't do it. It makes the internet a bad place. Google doesn't like it. They might penalize you, and it's just not good marketing. If you want to do good marketing to get links into your website, try to think of every link to your website as something that a person might actually see, click on, come to your website, have a good experience, and give you money. Because once again, that's what we're trying to do here is make some money. So when you think about link building for search, you want to make sure that you have quantity. Um, you know, if I tell you I'm good, you're like, that's cool. If 20 other people tell you I'm good, you're like, oh, that might, that might actually be true. Diversity. Uh, so if I tell you I'm good and then all of my family members come up and say, Ruth is really good, you're like, well, yeah, you would say that. Whereas if 20 unrelated people uh, tell you that I'm good, you might lend that more credence. It's the same with links. Uh, and then authority. So if Bill Gates tells you I'm good at internet marketing, you might lend that slightly more credence than some crazy man on the street yelling about how I'm good at marketing. And those are sort of the three different levers that you want to think about when you're thinking about building links to your websites. You want a lot of links from a lot of different websites that have some kind of authority. So either a local authority, if you're a local business, getting links from other local businesses, or a topical authority, getting links from businesses that are related to yours, or other websites that have content that's related to yours. That's sort of what you want to think about when you build links. I know that was a ton of information, but I really do hope that you guys start thinking about the ways that you're marketing and presenting your businesses online, because it can mean a huge difference in your traffic. Um, and any one of these tactics that I just talked about is going to get you more traffic than not doing anything. But if you do it together, this is a, a chart for a client of ours um, who we're doing paid PPC, we're doing link building, we're doing social media, we're doing organic search. And as you can see, as we start to combine these, the amount of visits they're getting from every single source increases. And what I especially want to draw your eye to is here at the bottom, their direct traffic. That's people who are opening up their browser and typing in their website directly. Through our other marketing efforts, direct visits to their website also increased because search mention marketing, well done, not only drives people to find you in search results and encounter you for the first time, it builds your brand and builds relationships and builds repeat visits so more people think of you when they think of whatever it is that you do and they come directly to your website. If you do nothing else, I just want to leave you with this, install some kind of web analytics program on your website. Google Analytics is a free tool. Um, it is going to be enough for your website unless you have hundreds of thousands of pages. Most websites can get by with Google Analytics. It's very robust. It's free. Anyone who's been on a diet can tell you that what gets measured gets improved. So start looking at the traffic to your website and seeing where you can pull the levers to get more. Thanks, everybody.